Indeed, certain clinical trials, such as uh, trials uh, and examination of gaming addictions, online video games in particular, uh, these research show and illustrate how actually we create ourselves, how we create our own future, and how our self-perception and world perception can change depending on what we invest attention to and where uh, we concentrate on. For example, gamers, when they have when they play online video games, the their perception changes drastically. They are totally absorbed in the virtual space of the game in the literal sense of the word. And contemporary design shows an image which is very realistic and dynamic. And a game, like for example, from the first person when you're playing from the first person, it contributes to change of the uh, self-perception. It is the so-called avatar self-identification. It is when a person begins to identify himself and identify himself with the avatar, with the character. In reality, a person is sitting in the room looking at the monitor and just moving and manipulating the mouse. There, is, there are no sounds, neither body perception, even if there are very loud sounds and intensive sensations like hunger, threat or pain. A person doesn't notice that. His major sensory organs through which 90% of information comes to us from outside world is vision and hearing. They are totally focused on perceiving the game, the virtual world. And due to such a, a detachment from the reality and total involvement in the reality of the game, such a changed altered state of consciousness is called the gaming trance or gaming alcohol like intoxication, or there is a dark flow term. The consciousness of a gamer uh, actually edits a picture which is imperfect and it just omits some faults, some mistakes, it draws some elements and corrects everything, adds some dynamics and actually makes this image on the monitor very close to what we observe in the external world. Such studies showed and actually there are con contradictions and differences between those people who perceive real world and those who are gamers with like who play for hours hours on computers and it's the difference of perception compared to the one who just observed it from the outside and it, when there were MRI examination of game addicts it, the data the results are just shocking for example as it is known, our brain possesses neuroplasticity. So there are certain functional or structural changes in the brain all the time, depending on our skills, engagement, what we do, what, what habits we have, the patterns of emotional reactions and behavior. So in the brain, all our vital activity is depicted and all our preferences, including perception. What, what, how, in which way we perceive is reflected in the sensor cortex. Uh, the sensor cortex is uh, where information is coming from eyes, ears, tactile sensations, etc. So, this region in game addicts are changed both structurally in terms of the number of neurons and functionally by the number and quality of neural net connections between neurons and neural groups. And these changes comply with mostly perception of a gaming space, of the virtual world, but not the real everyday life in which we exist on an everyday basis. So in the brain of a game addict, we can say that the perception of such a person differs drastically from a person who does not play games. And also there are changes, changes were detecting, detected relating to self-identification. In Angular Gyrus, you can Google and look what region of the brain it is. It's a neural group which relates to the process of self-identification. And also other regions were also changed, which relate to empathy, identification and self-determination of a person in healthy people. Uh, several studies have been performed in various countries when they observed uh, the activeness in these regions of the brain when game addicts 
uh, at the subconscious, uh, subclinical and clinical levels. They were playing games, were talking about games and telling about their avatar, or just they were just imagining how they were playing. The same observations were done when a person was telling about his real life beyond the game and the activeness of this angular gyrus and also other regions which relate to self-identification is always much higher when people were playing or talking about the game or thinking about the game compared to the self-reflection state and the real state of dissociation arises many gamers describe such a bodiless state teenagers when they have they, they have such internet online disorder gaming disorder they feel out of body and this state has certain newer biological markers which we can see on MRI testing results and the person feels himself out of the body they are mostly identifying themselves with the character the, the avatar they are playing and they were in, involved in the gaming space but nothing was affecting them except information just illusory images with 3d effects on the monitor neither neither buildings no forests no mountains no enemies no friends none of this existed but the program which was building a dynamic image by means of pixels on the screen everything else was added by the consciousness of a gamer himself just in the case with the ac jackie whom i was talking about in the beginning of our conference we see the same pattern that the sensory organs perceive himself in certain place compared to where consciousness perceived itself so such studies show that really the consciousness has informational nature and they illustrate that what a tremendous power human attention has because whatever information a person is focused on he actually becomes this information that's and based on the uh, studies of the brain it's in the literal sense of the world and based on the results of all the tests we now understand how we form our post-mortem destiny how a person by paying attention to one or another piece of information can create certain consequences for himself basically to build himself and create himself this way